oh my word. I mean, seriously. Wow, what an episode. Honest to God, Moffat has just pulled off another miracle. It's like heaven sent all over again. Oh my word, there are no words to describe my reaction from World Enough and Time. Oh my word, this episode was truly epic. Anyway, I can already tell you now guys that this review is already going to be a one hell of a review. So, why don't we begin my review on World Enough and Time. Gosh, it's going to be so epic. Let's begin right now. Hi guys and welcome back to another Doctor Who review. Now today I'm going to be reviewing my thoughts on episode 11 of Doctor Who series 10 World Enough and Time part 1 of the series 10 finale and judging by my expression just from re-watching it just a couple of moments ago I'm still shocked and surprised from that amazing cliffhanger. Oh my words, I do not have any words to describe this week's episode apart from epic, awesome and just mind-blowing. Oh my word, this episode, oh my gosh, I, I generally have no idea what to make of this episode apart from that this was just one of the best episodes that I've seen for a while and I think it's the brilliant build-up to an epic finale. I can't see the Doctor Falls going wrong at all. I can't see it going wrong unless Moffat really mucks it up. But Moffat has really impressed me this time. He's generally done it again. It's like heaven sent all over again. I mean, I prayed for a miracle that Moffat would not muck up this episode. But, oh my word, that miracle came true. Oh my word, I just seriously guys, I have no general idea on this episode entirely. I'm so shocked from it, still shocked and surprised of how awesome and epic this episode was. But before we go in, into more detail about this episode, I want to give out a quick shout out to a recent subscriber to my channel. Her name's called Debbie Nicholas and she asked me if she if I could give her a shout out. And so this is her little shout out. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, Debbie. But anyway, this is the review of World Enough and Time. And I think we'll begin with the pre-title sequence when we saw the Doctor regenerating we didn't see who it was he regenerated into, but I think it might have been a flash forward for the Christmas special. And I have a few theories of what to expect for the Christmas special, or possibly next week's episode. What I possibly think about this regeneration at the beginning, it hooked me up straight away for the episode. That it made me realise that we've only got two more episodes left and then Peter Capaldi is gone. Peter Capaldi has left Doctor Who and just two more episodes remain with him and I seriously, I'm so sad about this but what an absolute amazing start to the penultimate episode, starting off with a, with a regeneration scene. It hooked me up, but it made me think towards maybe the Christmas special or maybe to the end of the, to the finale, because this is my theory. I think the Doctor will regenerate in the finale, but we won't see who he has regenerated into in the finale. I think we might find out who he has regenerated into in the Christmas special, but I think he might regenerate in the finale, but I don't think we'll find out who he has regenerated into. That's probably my theory on it, but while wow, starting off with a regeneration scene is truly unbelievable, but it hooked us up straight away, and it really built up that intense and serious atmosphere throughout the episode. It really just showed us that we've only got two more episodes left with Peter Capaldi, and that's it, or maybe the potential one episode, and that will probably might be it for Peter Capaldi's era, but wow, I'm seriously so amazed of how Moffat has just surprised me yet again. Of all people, Stephen Moffat wrote this. 
Oh my word, I mean, I wouldn't even trust any other writer to write any sort of a finale, apart from a few writers I have in my mind, but of course Stephen Moffat must be the only person to write all the finales, because it's his finales, it's his show, he has the power to write what episode he likes to do, and we have complete faith in him on doing the best penultimate episodes, but we don't have faith in him when he does the final, final episode of the series because sometimes it goes downhill, like with Hellbent. But I cannot see the Doctor Falls going wrong at all. There is so much in the Doctor Falls that there's nothing there to possibly go wrong. I mean, Moffat should not muck up this episode for next week. I mean, I possibly might think that this finale could be the most epic finale we could ever have for Doctor Who in history. I might sound a bit over the top, but it's true, guys. I mean, generally, what did you think of this episode entirely? I mean, as a single episode, as a penultimate episode, I thought that it was such of a brilliant build-up to the second part of the finale, The Doctor Falls. And this is what I predicted in this episode to happen. I wanted great atmosphere, I wanted great structure, great pacing, I wanted some great character development, I wanted some shocks, surprises, and I really wanted to enjoy the entire episode itself. And this episode did exactly how I wanted this episode to play out. It completely hit the brief for me. I mean, honest to God, maybe other people might have had other briefs and many other predictions that they wanted this episode to play out. But for me, this episode exactly played out how it should have been. And for me, it ticked all the boxes for me. Oh my word, there was just so much eerie and atmospheric atmosphere through the hospital scenes where Bill was stuck on at the bottom of the ship, trying to get back to the Doctor, but even those dark scenes at the beginning where she was down at the hospital and she was walking through these patients going through, and there was one scene which I absolutely loved and they really exploited the emotions of the Cybermen, that one p word, pain, constantly being repeated over and over again, pain, pain, pain. It's exploiting that emotion, just showing that these these patients are dying from emotions. And just this constant word of pain just really reminds me of that exploiting of emotion for these Cybermen. I mean, these Cybermen don't have any emotion. They don't have any pain. All of the pain is cured. All of the emotion is cured. And just showing that, that constant reminding of pain just really makes me think about this episode a lot. It was just one thing I absolutely loved about the episode, but also the reveal of John Sims' master, the master of disguise as Mr. Razor. Oh what my gosh, I knew for a moment, all right, when's John Sims gonna get in this episode? And then when I saw that the Doctor and Nardo went inside the hospital and then Missy was just stuck at the computers just doing some work and then the Razor just peeped around and like, oh my gosh, this is it, this is it. I know who that person is now. As I seen just a few little shots and it reminded me of, of John Sims' face. Oh my word, I knew it from the stars. I knew it if it was probably gonna be John Sims, I would go absolutely mental and boy did I go mental. Oh my word, I seriously just have no emotions. Did you see what I did there? I have no emotions to tell you guys how I felt at the end of this episode. I felt heartbroken, I felt shocked, surprised. Even these words can't describe any much more about that epic cliffhanger at the end. John Sims, Missy, and then that Mondasian Simon at the end, which we all knew in the end was Bill. Spoiler alert if you have not seen it. But also, you should not even be watching this anyway if I'm just telling you the spoilers and stuff like that. But surely enough, if you're watching this right now, you should have watched Doctor Who by now. So... It's probably your fault by watching this review, don't blame me. But I have to say that Bill, as a Mondas in Simon, going through the processes of how she got shot, which was heartbreaking enough. It was just so heartbreaking to see Bill with that entire hole in her chest. Her entire middle just disappeared. And you could just see inside her body. And wow. 
just that one person who shot her and I felt absolutely heartbroken when the doctor was making a speech. I mean, when the doctor makes a speech, he absolutely goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with who he's talking to. And when he finishes, everything seems to be completely fine at the end. But when that one person shot Bill in the heart where the doctor wasn't about to finish, the reaction on the doctor's face just says it all. Oh my gosh, he felt so shocked and surprised but heartbroken and he had so much grief at the same time like no this could not happen like seriously even the doctor was just so heartbroken he was breathtaking by Bill's reaction of her being shot in the heart oh my word even Nardle as well oh, guys I'm seriously over the moon about this episode this is one of the best penultimate episodes that I've seen for a while. As well as with Heaven Sent, this is up there with one of them. Oh my word. It makes me think that Moffat has done another miracle and Moffat has really impressed me. Like, generally, really impressed me. Oh, and especially the Mondasi Simon. I liked it how, basically, Bill wasn't fully converted to become a Simon at the beginning or throughout the middle of the episode and I'm glad they didn't reveal all of those patients to be Mundasin Simon. You know one reason why? It just exploited that kind of one element of how scary and how creepy the Mundasin Simon are because if you just introduce them they're not going to be all that scary. It might be excited just to see them back but how would they really push them into their great advantage for the Mundas and Simon to become so creepy and so monstrous as a villain. I mean, keeping them all round in the dark atmosphere, the shadows, where they're more likely to become that creepy, that scary. Exploiting this Mundas and Simon to not really be featured a lot in the episode until the very, very end where the Doctor realised that Bill was a Mundas and Simon. And I think at the end, when the Doctor realised that who he was, he realised he was too late. He could not do anything to Bill, even when she was fully converted. The conversion is permanent. So I do hope that maybe Bill will not return for next week's episode. Because I think in a Q&A which Stephen Moffat and Pearl Mackey appeared in, they revealed that Pearl Mackey has left Doctor Who and she will not be appearing in the Doctor Falls. Well, I might be wrong, she may appear for a little teaser. However, I think now Moffat has confirmed that Pearl Mackey has left Doctor Who. And wow, it means now that the conversion is permanent. Bill is the one only companion to be converted into a Cyberman or a Cyberwoman, if you might call that sense. But oh my gosh. It's, that was such of an ingenious plot twist by Stephen Moffat. It was just one thing that elevated this episode to become truly amazing. I mean, we wanted Bill to become a Simon. As I said in my preview, which I had a look over just a few moments ago, and it's had so many views and so many likes. It's probably one of the most best previews that I had for a while, ever since I started Series 10 Reviews and Previews, that video has been the highest of my Series 10 Reviews and Previews so far. So I thank you everyone for watching that preview because that preview took a lot of time to make and I was really, really happy that it got a lot of reception. About, I don't know, over 100 views by now. Oh my word. People absolutely enjoyed that preview. And just discussing my thoughts on possibly that Bill could possibly turn into a Simon. Was I right? Oh my word. Just that fact that Bill is now on Mundas in Simon. Martha cannot reverse the process. As Mr. Razor said in the episode, conversion is permanent. So therefore, Martha cannot reverse the process on Bill. So, that's it guys. Bill Permaki has left Doctor Who, and she has left as a Mundasian Cyberman. But I'm not too sure if she's going to appear in next week's episode, but we will hopefully save that for the preview. But, oh my word, that plot twist of Bill becoming a Mundasian Cyberman was just so ingenious, and it really made us so heartbroken that Bill has fully been converted to become a Cyberman. And the Doctor 
it has been too late. Bill waited so many years for the doctor. The doctor said, wait for me, wait for me, all the time. And even though I loved the idea of how one side of the ship, time was going very, very, very slow in Bill's sense. She waited for the Doctor for many, many years or probably many decades. And then the Doctor, at the other side of the ship, time was going very, very, almost as usual, going at every single second. But I don't know how long, if one second goes by every second in the Doctor, where the Doctor was at the top of the ship, and then Bill was at the bottom. I'm not too sure how one second might play out for Bill's timeline. I mean, the time span would have taken like many moments or months. And I really liked how Mr. Razor and also Bill it kind of talked about how the TV was just frozen, but it was live. So I really liked how the TV showed what was happening. But when you look at it, it's not moving at all whatsoever because where Bill is, Time is moving very, very slowly, but where the Doctor is, time is moving very, very, very fast. So, for the Doctor to say, time is going as almost as usual, but for Bill, it's going very, very, very slow. So, you can honestly see that for every single second or many, many months, there still changes every single time. So, every single time where Bill sees a new still, every many months go by. So I really love the idea and it's a true fact. Whenever you're close to the source of gravity, it always slows down time. And I really, really like the idea of playing with true facts. I mean, it is true, it's logical. Gravity cannot lie at all, it's a true fact. So I'm really glad how Moffat really added that in there. While side of the ship, time is moving very, very, very slowly. And then on the other side, the top side, time is moving very, very, very fast. So I really love the idea. And Bill was trying to escape from where she was up to see if she could find the Doctor. But since Bill was shot in the heart and she was given a new chest unit, that made Bill think that Bill could... Bill's probably got a new heart, so she probably could go up now. She could go back and find the Doctor. But no. Once she steps outside, her heart will start working. And when her heart starts working, that's when the full conversion is necessary. And I'm really glad how they really took the step-by-step -step guide on this conversion of the Cybermen. And I really love this as a whole. I mean, as a whole, of conversion from human to Simon. I think it's the best cyber conversion scenes that we've had for a long time. I mean, the, the Age of Steel was a really good conversion kind of episode to show how the Simon are made for the modern series, but I'm really glad how this episode shows you the step-by-step -step guide on how conversion really takes place in this episode. And even for the earliest versions of the Cybermen, the Mondasian Cybermen. So, is Bill the first ever Mondasian Cybermen? Possibly. Or isn't that a reference probably to spare parts? I mentioned about spare parts, I actually did buy it, I actually downloaded it. Because a couple of days ago, there was an offer for spare parts on Big Finish. And they were going for one pound. And so I decided to get Big Finish and to download it. And so I might have a listen to it later. And possibly I might do a review on it, you never know. But anyway, I'm really happy that I got spare parts just yesterday. Because... The offer was going on for about £1, so I'm really, really happy that it only went for £1, because otherwise, if I tried to look it on Amazon, it would be like £100 or something like that. So I'm really glad I got spare parts. But do I think it kind of mixes up with Genesis of the Cybermen? I mean, when the Johnson's master said, it's the Genesis of the Cybermen, I'm not too sure maybe that will model up to spare parts, I'm not too sure. Many people might have many agreements about spare parts and how it's the genesis of the Simon. And how come have Stephen Moffat added that in there for this episode? I mean, genesis of the Simon, I thought would be spare parts for many people's opinions. But I don't mind it at all. I think it's just perfect to have it like that. Because although you might think that genesis of the Simon should be for only for spare parts, for me... I don't mind at all. I think adding the genesis of the Simon was a neat touch and relating to Big Finish. I really, really like that. And 
One thing that really striked me as odd when Missy was talking to Mr. Razor, or should I say John Sims Master by now, I mean, I should just call him John Sims Master because he is John Sims Master. Even from the moment when I spotted him keep creeping up behind Missy, I realised, like, oh my gosh, like John Sims, that's fucking John Sims, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a jaw breaking moment in a minute, and like, oh my word, when he revealed himself. Oh my word, the master of disguise. It's just a brilliant, brilliant way of disguising himself as the master. The master of disguise just blends in so well for John Sims Master. I mean, the master of disguise is such a brilliant, brilliant thing to add to John Sims Master. And just disguising him throughout the entire episode, it made fans wonder, when's John Sims going to get in this episode? And then the reveal had happened. Oh my god. That was one of the best reveals, or one of the best master reveals that I've seen for ages and ages and ages. You know like with Roger Delgado where basically there was like two Roger Delgados and then one was a phony and then one was the real one? I really liked how Roger Delgado did that throughout the 1970s, but I'm really glad how John Sims Master had put up a disguise, disguised himself as Mr. Razor. This shit was absolutely amazing, but it managed to fit an entire civilization inside the giant ship. So it's like the TARDIS, but just bigger on the inside, where it's actually just bigger on the outside as well. So you can get my point really, but I really liked how the ship was big, but the, bi but the inside was even bigger. But I just really, really liked the idea. And it was such a great place just to set the episode. I mean, there was no planet to go to. But, oh my word, this entire episode is set on that one ship that's bigger on the outside, but even more bigger on the inside. I really, really love that. I think it's a brilliant concept. It's much better of how the TARDIS is very small on the outside, but it's bigger on the inside. And I really liked how it's a, a new adaptation of that kind of ability of how the TARDIS is bigger on the inside than the outside. And how this ship is much bigger on the inside than it's bigger on the outside as well. So I really, really liked the idea. But when John Sims and Bill were having their discussions, I really liked their discussions because it's made us wonder about the entire of where they are because... They couldn't go outside because Bill's heart would, would stop working and I really really liked how their discussion was just so so neat. They really got along with each other so well and Mr. Razor or should I say Johnson's master, his character felt very very creepy, very mysterious, very funny and very sweet at times because he was so kind to Bill of giving her tea and stuff like that to help with the pain and basically Mr. Razor felt as a friend to Bill, and Bill felt like Mr. Razor was a very loyal person to her. So I really liked them both, and I really liked in when Bill was about to sneak into the conversion theatre, Mr. Razor completely turned against Bill, and felt it was necessary for Bill to be fully converted to become a Cyberman. And I really loved Mr. Razor and Bill's conversations. I thought their conversations were so intriguing and very interesting as well. But also at the time when Bill realised that her heart would stop working, Mr. Razor was like, we need to be strong. You need to be strong. We cannot go up to the surface. We cannot leave the hospital unless we are strong. And so he's very much that one person who has so much knowledge about this place and he, he kind of motivates Bill in some way to build, to get stronger and better, to be much fitter and much stronger and then she will be ready to go up again and leave the hospital. And then I liked how Mr. Razor basically drawed her to the conversion theatre and we never actually saw Bill being fully converted. Like, Everything about all of her suit was being connected up. We didn't see much of that because I think it would have been more horror for many of the children. But it would have been so brilliant if we actually saw that. Really, that would have made the episode a whole lot better if we actually saw the full conversion of Bill becoming a Cyberman. Oh my word. Again, this episode just truly excited me a lot. And... Even to the point where I didn't even watch this when I was live for the first time. I was basically working so, so late and I never had the time to watch Doctor Who. And 
usually on occasions when I'm so working on a Saturday, I never get the chance to watch Doctor Who live, ever, on two, two occasions. But, oh my word, just seeing it again, again and again and again. The more I watch this episode, the more I love it. It's just as simple as that. Moffat's just really surprised me. He's pulled off another miracle. I don't know how he does this. Is it like he always succeeds with penultimate episodes and then when it comes to the finale he always mucks up at the end? But I seriously do not hope that he mucks up The Doctor Falls next week's episode because this episode already has just built up so much and especially that cliffhanger as well. Oh my word, that cliffhanger was just so something else. Although the John Sims Master reveal was, was so amazing, I really liked how Missy didn't know the master at all when Johnson's master knew Missy. And I thought it should have been the other way around because if Missy is truly is the master, then surely she knows John Sims and John Sims shouldn't know Missy. Unless John Sims has always been the master and Missy has never been the master. That's probably my theory because it, it makes sense that Missy doesn't know John Sims. Missy has never seen John Sims' master at all, but John Sims' master knows Missy. So that makes me wonder, is Missy the master or is she a cop-out? Is she a fake master? Has John Sims' master been the master all the time? So it made sense at the time when I thought about it. John Sims' master should not have known Missy as her future incarnation as the master but Missy should have known that Johnson's master as the master. But it made us wonder that is Missy truly the master? Or has she never been the master at all? Oh my word, that's making my theory go grow deeper and deeper and deeper. Is Missy the master? Could she be the Rani? Not too sure. Could she have never been the master at all? Maybe she's maybe she was saying in series eight that I could be the master, but maybe she isn't. Maybe this entire thing about Missy being the master is all just a cop out. Maybe John Sims has always been the master, and there's never been a future incarnation of the master after John Sims. So, oh my gosh, that theory is growing much deeper and really becoming really intriguing now. The more I'm talking about it, the more it becomes true. I don't think Missy is the master at all, and I think Johnson's master has always been the master from the get-go. I think he's always been the master. I don't think Johnson's master has ever regenerated at all, because it truly makes sense. Mr. Razor, as John Sims, knew Missy, but Missy didn't know Johnson's master. So it made me wonder again, Missy shouldn't, Missy is not the master, and Johnson's master is truly the master. And he's never regenerated. So, oh my word, just talking about it more just really intrigues me a lot. But again, this episode truly created so much atmosphere. I mean, the hospital was so eerie, so atmospheric, very dark. Reminded me of The Empty Child and even reminded me a bit of Blink. I was creeped out by the hospital. It was so atmospheric, really eerie and very dark. And as from the beginning, you saw the beautiful CGI work of the black hole and the spaceship. Oh my word, it's much better CGI than a flying pyramid in the light of the land. Oh my word, that black hole, the CGI work was just truly unbelievable. Everything was so perfect in this episode. There was great atmosphere, great structure, great pacing. This episode went extremely fast. Honestly, I mean, I did not get bored of this episode whatsoever. This episode had me on the edge of my seat, waiting for a massive moment to happen. And wow, there were many spoilers, many shocks, and wow, I was heartbroken when Bill got shot. And I was even more heartbroken when Bill, as the Mondasian Cyberman, said, I waited for you. And the one thing I absolutely loved about Bill as the Mondasian Cyberman. The, the Mondasian Cyberman sound very, very similar 
to the Mondasian Cybermen in the 10th planet. The voice, the sound, it sounded very, very familiar. It felt so similar, it felt almost identical to the real voice of the 10th planet Mondasian Cybermen. Oh my word, the voices were just so incredible and it made me freak out a lot. Oh my word, that cliffhanger again really, really surprised me. And I think the Doctor was even more surprised when he saw John Sims' master and Missy side by side with the Mondasian Cyberman. And Bill, when even at the little, slight little moment at the end where we saw Bill's eye and she was crying and then we saw that little tear coming down from the Mondasian Cyberman. Oh my word, what an impact that has on Doctor Who fans. That has to be one of the best cliffhangers that we've had for such a long time. I mean, I'm serious. How much have you enjoyed this episode? And it's not going to be such of a prize, guys, because I'm rating this episode a 10 out of 10. The first ever 10 out of 10 rating for Series 10. This episode played out exactly how I wanted this episode to play out. Everything was so perfect. Nordor was executed really, really well. He had his like moments, he had his comedic moments at the very beginning. The whole story at the beginning felt very, very lighthearted. But then when all of the scenes kept happening down at the bottom of the ship in the hospital ward, things became really dark and really deep and very serious. It meant that the entire episode was truly, truly motivated to go in this direction. And I think Rachel Talele, I think I'm pronouncing her name right, she did an absolutely fantastic job on directing this episode and I have to especially say thank you Moffat, thank you, thank you so much for making this episode one of the best episodes that I've had for such a long time Moffat, thank you so much. I'm honestly praying to Moffat which I don't usually do that but in cases like this, this could be his final epic finale and it's looking that way guys, I'm serious. This episode was truly unbelievable. Nardo was executed really, really well. I thought Missy was really good. She was better than all of her other previous appearances. I didn't hate her at all. She was really, really good. And I think she played a part for the right moment, for the right amount that was needed to make the episode really intriguing. I think she played her part really well. And I think the Doctor overall was absolutely outstanding. Even to the point when he realized that Bill had been fully converted to become a Mandatian Cyberman. And I'm not too sure if the, I'm sure that the conversion is fully permanent. The Doctor cannot reverse it. For once, time is the Time Lord's enemy. And for once, the Doctor was too late. He was too late to save Bill. Bill waited and waited and waited for so many years. And time just ran out for the Doctor. And he could not save Bill. And he was too late to save Bill. And the conversion had just already started. And the conversion is permanent. There is no way to reverse the process to bring Bill back as a normal human being. Everything from the beginning, the regeneration scene in the beginning, foreshadowing the Christmas special or possibly the finale, possibly the Doctor might regenerate in the finale, but we may not find out who he has regenerated into until the Christmas special. That's going to leave us waiting on the edge of our seats till the Christmas special. Oh my word. And I thought that the characters in this was just executed so well. I even like that blue person. Although he shot Bill, I thought he was executed really, really well. Because I think he played his part. He didn't know what was happening unless he was really, really scared of these creatures coming up from the lips. And he was trying to protect himself. So I think he played his part. Unfortunately, he did shot Bill in the heart, which I thought... Oh my word, he should not have done that. In the middle of the Doctor's speech, that's just unbelievable. And it just made the entire scenario really, really serious and really heartbreaking. Oh my word. Again, this episode deserves a 10 out of 10 because the suspense was there, the tension was there, the atmosphere, the structure of the episode. I'm not going to go too much in detail about the plotline because... 
I feel like that the plotline will continue for next week's episode. I'm going to judge the overall plotline when we come to the next review because all I can say really is about the plot at the moment is that it's built up so, so well for the Doctor Falls. And I think that I probably will give you guys a true description of what I think about the overall storyline, the whole overall plotline, because it would really make sense that at the end of the Doctor Falls, everything will sum up. And I think that'll be probably to be the best time to sum up the plotline in general as a summary. So for now, I have to say that this episode truly gets an epic 10 out of 10 rating for me. The best episode from series 10 so far, beating the Empress of Mars by a mile. And wow, Empress of Mars is still up there as one of my favorites, but World Enough and Time has truly succeeded my expectations for this episode. Everything played out exactly how I wanted this episode to play out. This episode, in my word, was perfect. Absolutely perfect. I cannot fault this episode whatsoever. Honestly, this episode was just truly unbelievable. And I thought for Bill's last appearance, I thought she was absolutely tremendous. I think all of the characters were executed well. I thought that the atmosphere, again, was truly spot on. The structure was amazing, and I thought the pacing wasn't boring at all. The pacing was absolutely spot on as well. There was so much pace, it felt so fast that we were almost at the edge of our seats. I was not bored for a single moment. Every single scene had a meaning to it, and I absolutely loved every single scene, especially when Bill just got shot. The Doctor was talking to Bill all about the Doctor and Missy's relationship, saying how Missy can be good and that the Doctor wants Missy to be good and that Bill doesn't really know that if Missy can be good or whether she doesn't really trust Missy at all or whether she can trust Missy with her life. And so I was... I'm, I'm, so I was glad that how Bill was really, really cautious of Missy because Missy is very unpredictable. She is so unpredictable and just like the master, both of them, Missy and Johnson's master, they're so unpredictable. And with Johnson's master, Johnson's master inflicting Bill with so much words of wisdom. And I really liked how Johnson's master can really make people go so insane because that's what the master does best. He gets inside people's heads and it makes them go so insane. And that's what the master does best. He gets inside their heads and it makes them truly believe what he says is true. And that's what the master does, honestly. So. I have to say that John Sims, or should I say Mr. Razor, was truly unbelievable as well. He was the one character who I had my eye on throughout the entire episode. And I said to myself, that surely is John Sims' master. And then when I saw him and Missy together, oh my word, I knew it was the moment. I knew it was the moment where they revealed that John Sims' master was Mr. Razor and the master of disguise was such an, of a brilliant, ingenious concept. Oh my word. And especially the reveal of Bill becoming a Mondathian Simon. The conversion. Oh my word. The conversion process was just so interesting. Very intriguing. The best conversion scenes. The best conversion episode that I've seen for ages and ages and ages. We get to see the origins of the conversion for the Mondathian Cybermen. That is just unbelievable that you would never ever experience truly in a Doctor Who episode until now. Oh my word. Again, this episode was truly spectacular, epic, absolutely mind-blowing. My breath has just been taken away by the excruciating awesomeness by this episode. And the cliffhanger was a defo statement showing us how awesome and how epic this episode was entirely. So, guys, that is my review of World Enough and Time. I hope you have enjoyed this review. Make sure you leave a like on this video and also comment down below and tell me what did you think of this episode. Was it overall fantastic and truly phenomenal? I certainly did. I mean, if you don't give this episode a 10 out of 10, then 
what is wrong with you? Honestly, this episode was perfect for me. Maybe not perfect for you, but perfect for me. Everything played out exactly how I wanted this episode to play out like. And I got my wish. Moffat truly delivered an epic penultimate episode. And make sure you do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much guys for watching for this review. And I will see you guys next time for my preview for the Doctor Falls. And let's just hope that Moffat does not muck up the final episode of this truly epic finale. I mean, I cannot see the finale going wrong here from now. I truly expect big things for the finale. I mean, there's more Cybermen, Johnson's master and Missy, the Doctor, Nardle, but no Bill. Possibly, Pearl Mackey has already left the show and I think there might not be a small little scene with Bill, or there might be with probably the Herman Daxian Simon element being still in the episode. So maybe that might be what happens within the Doctor Falls. But I'm expecting big things for the Doctor Falls. But I'm hoping that you will stick around for my preview for the Doctor Falls. And I pray to God, I pray for another miracle that Stephen Moffat do not mock up this episode because you've done an successful episode already you've got this amazing build-up of an episode please do not ruin this episode the doctor falls next week i'm expecting big things for you moffat and i'm really just excited for next week's episode but what a penultimate episode that we've just had guys a 10 out of 10 rating this episode gives for me i could go seriously on and on and on and on and on about how awesome this episode was i could go all day but seriously, I think we need to end the video right here because I think I need to get myself ready for my little short little listen to to spare part because I have downloaded it, but I've not had the chance to listen to it. So maybe I could possibly do a little review on spare parts. So maybe you can always look out for that um, little review as well. So maybe that could be a possibility during the week. So hopefully you'll stick around for that. But anyway guys, let's conclude this review by saying that this episode, truly a 10 out of 10 rating, epic penultimate episode. And I'll see you guys next time for my preview for The Doctor Falls. Thank you very much guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.